In this video help, we're in the production schedule. Let's find out where that's at by looking at the nav. Shows the production schedule. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering all of these screens. Now I want to point out in these screens, <clears throat> the primary screen or the parent screen for all the rest of these that you see here is the production schedule. What does that mean? It means that all the basic entry is made on this screen and the other ones are supporting portals, list views, as you can see, there's other subordinate screens like the show's videos and production lists. Now we will be talking a little bit more in de definition about how the production build list is related to what we're doing here and the inventory where we're going to actually be creating other things from a parent screen on, a, on the inventory and the build list. But for the most part, this area here encompasses all the, the production screens. We'll then go on and look at the auction and schedule of events and then the automotive directory and some of the list screens that are available. Let's go ahead and cover this screen in a little bit more depth. Let's take a kind of a scenario and look at what, what's going on here. Uh, looking at this screen, there is a possibility of what the user is going to be doing is to purchase a automobile or and or to do work for somebody else that has one that needs restoration done on it or some major repairs. Now what happens is typically if you have a vehicle, the model, the year, the body style, and if it is actually purchased, you put the cost in for the purchase cost, you estimate the build time to complete, and this goes out, it says completed by August of 216, and the scheduled date is actually the 22nd, and you can put any date you want in there where you're forecasting that you'll have the project completed. This rebuild estimate is the cost plus a certain amount of money to build it to the level of what you're actually going to define in this area. And basically what we're looking at is each vehicle that comes in has some kind of a condition about it. For example, poor paint, some body rust, missing engine, flat tires, no transmission, missing trim drives and doors, damaged uh, trunk. So that's the basic amount of work that has to be done. When I say basic, what we're indicating here is that with rust and other issues that are going on, you still have to find some parts and materials, perform the restoration on those parts, and also do the entire vehicle as far as how you're going to approach it. Are you going to do a rotisserie where you're going to do the entire body and everything and reassemble all the parts? Are you going to do a cosmetic where it's in really good condition and maybe it needs upholstery and some uh, trim and other things that will vary based on the vehicle condition when it comes in. Now this record that we're looking at here at the top, when you create a new record, you can either do it in the do action over here by clicking on add a record or new record here, you're creating a new top level record for all the things that follow after it. For example, this is one vehicle's record with all the work that's going to be performed on that record as far as that vehicle is concerned. There are other subscreens that are tied to this so that work that's being done, like for example the build list and inventory items that are uh, defined for this, this particular project, need to be identified and they're all related back to the screen. When we talk about a relational database, what happens, we create the basic data which you see here at the top and also over here at the side and then all these records here are supporting it as sub records and sub screens. Calculations done down at the bottom to summarize the information in this screen is based on the inputs of the data you put in the portal records. Let's take a look at some of the other information here. We're going to have the VIN which is the vehicle identification number for the actual vehicle, the plate and state basically what state it comes from. The Arizona, uh, say for example I'm in Arizona so you would have the Arizona plate ID number in there and the license plate year and month of expiration. And this is very important information because if you're going to register this vehicle upon purchasing it you're going to need this information in order to register that vehicle. The title also is obviously going to be required because if you're transferring the tile, title either from interior in one state or bringing it into another, uh, your home state or and or even overseas, you're going to need to have all this information or you're not going to be able to register the vehicle. Okay, let's take a look at the next thing over here. Now we've covered the basic navigation and do, uh, do action. There is an ID number for each new record that is created. So if I created the next record, record in sequence and I came over here and I said go next record, you're going to see that number two is a different vehicle. 
In this case, it's a four-door or two-door 1956 hardtop coupe. It's, for, uh, it's estimated rebuild is four months for $12,000 and it's expected to be done in March of, well, it's, these are bogus because we're just using regular um, bogus things to be able to build records. And while I'm here, let's cover that. When this application is delivered, the information that you see that here we're, where we're dictating the how it's used will all be removed. The, it'll cycle back and the first new record that you add will be number one and so forth as you're going through and adding new vehicles that are going to be either repaired or restored. So each time you create a new record, you're going to see new data added to all these fields. And for example, I said example record in here. But if I wanted to go back now, and return to the record I was working in. I'd go down here and I'd go to first record and you can see number one is back. And now I'm going to be looking at some of the other things that are on this screen. Before we get to the portal, we have a progress photo uh, thing here where basically when the vehicle comes in, we take a picture of it. Uh, and as it progresses through the restoration or repairs, you can add as many new pictures as you want. Now on the iPad or iPhone, Basically, what you're doing is you're going from one to the next record. Now, there's just sample data in here right now, but you can get the idea of where you're going to move through the different photos. For example, as you re uh, start working on the vehicle, you may be taking the major components off, like you may be taking the hood, the trunk lid, the, the running boards, maybe the fenders. Uh, of course, the engine maybe, the grill and so forth, and the bumpers. Whatever level you're going to go to, what you want to do is show progress and a narrative over here about the photo in the condition at that time. This is historical data that will help you the next time you're renovating one of these types of vehicles to go through and look at what you did and how you did it. And let's talk a little bit about that. When you're actually building or doing a restoration, you are taking in data and tracking that data for a number of different purposes. One of those is that you're forecasting in this portal all the work that's going to be needed to be done. So basically what we're looking at here is we're using a uh, Roman numeral type of an entry for each item that is being done. Uh, we're putting in 1-1, it could be 1.1, .1, .1, it could be 1.1. whatever as far as how far you want to carry out the link depending on for example, if you were doing an engine, it came up and now it's going to be number 3.0 point whatever where you're working on the engine. There may be very many facets where you're actually working on it, doing different kinds of things where you want to enter in what those items are, what the labor requirements are, what the material requirements are, and so forth as you're working down through the actual interpretation of what needs to be done. And that's the most important thing about this portal. What we're doing is we're production planning and scheduling. And what we're doing is we're putting in a forecast. Now, some of these fields would have been emptied. I filled them out just so you can see what the data would look like in them. If we're doing a teardown where we're pulling off the ho a hood and removing it, and we had the labor for doing that, and we picked a technician, for example, and a labor rate, which is basically a $30 labor rate as opposed to a group rate. A group rate would be a blended rate where everybody would take all these and average them to a group rate of several people working all on that task at one time. What you're really trying to do in here is you're trying to forecast what it would cost and come up with a total number of what this would cost to build this vehicle. And this is an estimation sheet. Is that clear? It's an estimation sheet. And as each task becomes done as far as evaluating it, you go ahead and put a done in here. And what that does is you're estimating this thing is clear that what this needs to be done, you're, you, everybody agrees that this is the estimate. And you're going down through as you're walking around the vehicle and looking at all the things that need to be done. Now, this could be prior to the teardown before you actually start taking the vehicle apart. And then as you're breaking down the vehicle and finding new things, then you would add those to the estimate of what the costs are going to be. Now, as you're doing the teardown, you can put in an estimated time and labor that it would take to be done. And that would indicate that you're managing your individual information as far as the restoration is concerned. But in reality, if this is different when you estimate it, then you have something up here called the scheduled labor portal. What the scheduled labor portal does is it takes the actual ID number, like the one-to-one, -one, the person that did it, and you're doing the labor hours for the actual. In other words, when they actually start doing the work and you know that it is 
is actually this amount for this amount of time until it's completed, then you would come back over here and you would not have to edit this basically, but this is an estimation. In this one, you would be putting the actual in there. Over there, you come back here and you put in done because that task is now completed. Because these are individual tasks that are being completed on your estimate. So this is the estimate to do the work. I'll go through these in more detail in the portal next. But basically what happens, this will be continually filled out until you get down to the bottom. Once you get down to the bottom, this scrolls. And if you want to add a new record, you can click on last. What it's going to do is it's going to go to the very last record. Now, for example, if I click up here so that that record is the active record, and then I click down here and say last, it's going to move down to all the way below here if there were records all the way in there, and it's going to show you a new blank record like here at the end. And then you can go ahead and start entering your data. As you create anything in this field, like adding a date or whatever, then this record would now be live, and it'd be the next record being entered. If you want to see the portal for anything, you cannot have a blank set of fields in here and see a portal. It actually has to have actual data in it. What is the portal? The portal is the record entry that you're doing for the row that you're working with within that particular estimate. And you'll see that all that information is listed here. And what you would do if you had an error in it and you needed to redo it, you could either edit it here, edit it in the record, or say it was the last record that was entered and now that is not going to be used for some reason, or it needs to be pulled out of the record, you can come in here and delete it in here. Now you always delete portal records within the individual portal production schedule portal. For the reason that the math needs to be updated on all this, when you delete this row, it will update and clear all the data in the portal on the screen in the production record. Coming over here, I'm clicking back, I'm over here. If I took out that record, it would remove it, it would update all the calculations at the bottom of the screen. If you try to remove the data here, it would remove the data, but then you'd end up with holes in the record as far as what is actually done. Now, let's go over and talk a little bit more in detail. This numeric Roman numeral system, basically what it does is it separates segments of how you're going to approach your estimate to complete. You go down through them, you can change them where you break, say for example, all the one dot, whatever would be a disassembly uh, tasks. Then you go to the, say for example, the drivetrain and now you do a new one that's going to be 2.0 for the drivetrain and what are you going to do? You're going to be removing things from the engine which would be 2.0, 2.01 and so forth. It's up to you how you put in your numerics in here. This is really dependent upon how much detail you have to have in the breakdown. These are required. These need to be in here because the, the entire records are sorted by this number keeps everything in order based on the actual numeric you're putting in here. If I wanted to change the numeric, I could go in here and say, for example, I wanted this to be ahead of this one. I would change this one to three, this one to two, and it would put it back up here and reorganize it. That's how you reorganize the record. The next thing in the record is very simple and straightforward. You click on the field, the field brings up a scroller, and you can put in the date for that particular start date that you're going to be working on that. You put the start time in by typing it directly in using the scroller. The next thing is the same thing with this date in time, basically the start time, the end date, and end time for the task, and it's this task on this row. What work area are you going to be in? In this case, the work area is a scroller where you pick what you want to be working on. Now, what's interesting about this particular scroller is that in the, in the iPad and iPhone, you cannot edit directly into a field. Uh, now, on this, I'm actually doing a simulation of the iPad and iPhone where the tables are coming up and you click in here and you have the simulation where it shows this. Well, what happens if you don't have, say for example, the engine in here? What you would do is you'd go to the top of the screen, click on the build area header, and what'll happen, they're highlighted in green. Each one of these has its own edit list table. In this particular case, you would come in here, add a new item, edit it up here and change it. For example, now if I want to say uh, add a new record and I said engine and I added it in there, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to see that engine is now a part of the, the records in here. If I wanted to edit 
this I could click here then go up here and edit that field if I wanted to edit this one I would edit it once you start adding things and using them do not edit them do not change them because what you're doing is you're affecting the next person that comes in there that's going to need that particular item and if you're taking it out of there or changing it they're going to be confused because they're looking for a particular thing like bumper front left trim if you now change that it's going to confuse them and they will not understand what's going on so once you create things if you need something that's slightly different or different you would go in let's take a look at this one this is the build task itself and these are all the kinds of things that you would do in a build task weld whatever sandblast could be one of them or whatever and right now you see sand blast there if you had to have something like uh, acid bath or dip or chrome or whatever you could add it to the list again by clicking on the build go in and add it then you can go back to the production schedule the next one is labor now labor is a little different these are different task types labor types these are things that people do as a task type. And you can see, for example, like glass repair, welding, disassembly. It could be anything, mechanic work, secretary. And you'll see that some of the overhead labor type things are also in here. So for example, if you have a secretary in the front office doing paperwork or a tech uh, guy who's a clerk ordering parts, then their labor would still need to be in there for what would re be required for ordering parts as far as labor time. And you would be using the inventory clerk to put them in the estimation list and also eventually in the actuals under the labor. The next thing is the labor person. Each labor person is entered here, their name, and then their labor rate. The group rate is left blank because you can add that in the actual record where you put in the uh, actual br uh, blended rate for work that's being done by a group of people. Now all these are going to be retained in the application when it's delivered to you. So you're basically adding a group task and in this case if I edit here you'll see you can edit the rate, you can edit the name and what I would do when you get this is just to go ahead and take your labor type people. I would leave in the group task but I would modify the rest of these. The next one is the uh, labor hours. Now this starts to do some interesting things here. The way that math is done to calculate hours requires a decimal and in this particular case if you come down here and look at the time calc in minutes if you put in the minutes if I went in here and I said it's uh, 93 minutes for example or say 95 minutes to make it a nice round number and I look in there then the decimal that needs to go in here is 1.58 so you're reading the decimal here that's what would go in there to give you 95 minutes now if you did uh, 120 minutes or whatever it's basically going to be used for the calculation to calculate the labor cost to get a summary number for that particular uh, account as far as the labor is concerned okay now now that we've covered these and these items uh, and we've looked at the portal the only thing that we've left undone is we did the progress information as far as the individual uh, things up here as far as the labor is concerned one of the things you want to be aware of is that these numbers do not need to match in fact they probably will not match because in the process of doing the labor materials and all that stuff in the general overhead and costs and so forth as you add it back in taking each individual and putting the individual uh, data in this screen and adding the actuals in for labor rate and cost it's going to calculate up and give you a grand total down here at the bottom the only thing we haven't covered is if I wanted to go see the actual labor I would go in here and this would be the labor rate now there are comment areas in here where you can say labor notes there would be things in there say like you're doing a blended crew you can put in there the individual and his rate labor rate and the individuals to a thing where you did a group rate that would be so you can understand who was in the group rate and who did the work as far as the group was concerned you can also delete the record in here if you need to and you can also do things for example like if I click in here on this screen uh, one of the things I didn't cover is you can actually do a next and what it'll do is it'll move through the tab order for each one of these records and this is true throughout the application if you want to move record to record you can go this way and go back and go through the records or you can use the record thing here where it shows you next prior first last and then show all like we did before if we do a fine 
when you're in the portal records, this is where you would be doing a find. And then you can display from the find. You go back in and you would look at, for example, the production schedule list view. If you did a find either here or in the actual record, whatever you did there will be reflected over here. So for example, if I started a search and I said start a search and I put in their schedule ID and I put in 1.1, that would say I know what that particular item is and I could say go ahead and find it. And in this case, I always want to point out it says no records match the 1.1 schedule ID. Well, you can either modify it or cancel it. If I say cancel it, what it's going to do is it's going to return the record and then that gives you the opportunity to see that there is no 1.1 but there is a 1. So let's do it again just so we can do the exercise. Say search, put in a 1, perform the find, there it is. Now you'll see right there you saw for just an instant if I click in any field up here I can bring up the target I can now see that there was 1 it was a record one of one and there's two omitted and I can say show all and it'll bring all the records back or I can come back over here and say show all so you do have some options I want to point out do not use these two icons this adds a new record this deletes a record all of the icons in the application are supplied under the do action drop down what happens you can get yourself into a lot of trouble because some records do not allow you to add or screens do not allow you to add and some of them if you delete them will cause all kinds of problems with your individual counts as far as here is concerned and I left it blank to show you one two three four they should all be sequential if you delete one and you delete it at this record level it's going to cause you issues later on when you see something missing in the schedule so do not delete a record edit it or write over it if you have to in this case it's all blank if you wanted to write over to add a new one do that just go into the record by clicking here and then you see in this blank record there's a whole new blank record that was created now add your data and fill in this field to complete it and then you're back in like you're supposed to and you can see when you in a new record and the record hasn't had any data added to it that it is also blank and we're in the record number three because I can see that up here at the top by the ID that this is record number three if I go back and look at the list one more time you can see that number three is the record that we're reviewing okay we're going to be continuing down on the next video and we're going to be looking at some of the other things that are supplied in the production schedule as far as these items are concerned if you have any questions you can stop now you can go to the uh, website developer support and in the developer support area, you can ask questions, either start a chat, send an email, or register a question on the site. Thank you.